and the global patient safety challenge, as well as the technical tools that are available. And you have, uh, you know, the lastly, the touch on the, the sustained, uh, sustainable the development goals, particularly goal three, dealing with, uh, you know, the health. And uh, earlier you mentioned that you will give only 30 minutes presentation. That's why I killed the time giving the introductory remarks, the presentation, so that we will not have uh, too much time uh, left. But uh, it's good that you uh, spend time, you know, give us more time on the, what the BHO is doing so that the audience will benefit from uh, your presentation. But we still have time for the, you know, discussion and the, you know, the discussion, the questions and queries. So the floor is open for, the, for discussion. So the, the floor is yours now. And okay, please uh, come to the microphone, please. Yeah, sure, sure. That's okay. So and I'm Dr. Dr. Sumjit Chijaran from SAI Thailand. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Daniel. This is the valuable and it's very comprehensive lecture that give us for more information about the bill. And about the patient safety and all of the especially in the WHO role in the, in the patient safety. I would like to ask you all what is your opinion about the role of the accreditation program that maybe impact the patient safety? Have you, what is your opinion about this accreditation program or accreditation body that is love to improve the patient safety Always in the country or in the local way, please. Is is there any more uh, uh, queries? Otherwise, we will just respond now. Okay, please. Probably we take few more questions and then you can respond. The theme of this meeting uh, is uh, what uh, intelligence and wisdom, and then as a, a, a inner power towards sustainable development. And uh, I think that is uh, some of the key. You know, if you have wisdom and intelligence then you probably see the significance of patient safety, particularly among the provider. And, uh, and, and the concept that the people buy into the patient safety is most important because right now, particularly if you look into the hospital or the private hospital or physician, a lot of time, they practice based on monetary, monetary incest incentive and not based on uh, the, the issues of human dignity. All right? If we have respect for human dignity, then that may have the inner drive uh, to, to, to actually put this forward. My, my, my question is, what has the WHO done in terms of, you know, arousing the concept and respect for human dignity and link that to patient safety? Once you have the, 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 the concept right, then you would have the commitment then you seek for capacity. Uh, then you would go uh, to practice it and have confidence. And then uh, the compassion and the commitment, uh, the compassion would come afterwards. So, so that's, uh, for me, is a very important part, more so than the methods that you want to do to provide safe care. 
Can we entertain one more question and then we will respond? Okay, if not, maybe the Dr. Daniel, the, can you respond to questions now and then afterward we will entertain more questions? Is this uh, working? It's working. It's yes? working. Okay, it's working. You. First of all, I have to apologize to Dr. Dongbadi. My wife tells me I talk too much. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding you. It's okay. Before <laughs> I left, before I came here this morning, she said, "Daniel, don't talk so much today. Don't talk <laughs> no, so much." No, no, but no. anyway, okay. So now I have to go home <laughs> no, and tell her. I, I got the message from Dr. Dr. Piyawan that no you problem. will speak <laughs> only 30 <laughs> minutes, so you have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Anyway, I, I really want to thank you very much for providing me the opportunity and um, you know, to share some of, of what WHO is doing. I, I think there was a question about the role of uh, accreditation. I, I think for me it's self-evident um, what the role is. Um, you know, accreditation, a, a formal accreditation uh, brings, I, I can only speak from my experience, in, in, in contexts where there is no formal accreditation process, uh, Patient safety is a massive problem, and uh, in my experience, uh, in 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 many countries, in many developing countries, at the country level, um, suggests that um, um, without without proper uh, formal uh, evidence-based uh, accreditation processes, um, it's extremely difficult to ensure um, proper adequate safety. I mean, p accreditation is really all about um, it's all about accountability. It's all about uh, developing and, and distributing and applying best practices. It's all about generating data and, and making sure that uh, the decisions are based on data. So, um, you know, I, I think that um, the WHO very much supports uh, um, efforts of member states to, to develop um, accountable institutions for accreditation of, uh, of, um, of healthcare settings. And I think what Thailand is doing is, is, really, uh, is really quite remarkable. It's, it's remarkable, it's certainly in, in my experience. Um, the, the, the question about the respect for human dignity is a very good one. Um, you know, I've always found, again, in my experience, that um, you can teach people to um, wash their hands, you can teach people to um, put in an intravenous line, you can teach people to do almost anything, but it's very, very difficult to teach them to really care about other human beings and to really, um, to really want to serve other human beings. So I, I actually don't have an answer to your question. I think WHO has always, has always emphasized the concept of compassionate care, has always emphasized the, and, and has sort of thought of that or, or developed that around concepts of quality of care. But again, it, it's, um, when it actually comes down to building capacity, it's extremely difficult to, to change, to, to teach people about, um, um, to sort of really teach them how to be compassionate if they, if they don't already have those inclinations. Now, that having been said, I have worked with many, many healthcare providers who, uh, who really do care about their patients. And certainly during the Ebola crisis, um, people risked their lives every day, risked their lives every day to, to work uh, and to treat and keep patients with Ebola alive. So. Um, you know, this is um, this is something that we see all the time. Um, I was going to say something, but I just forgot what I was going. But anyway, I think I think that this, uh, um, you know, I, I think that it's it's something that's it's actually very difficult, uh, very 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 difficult to teach. But uh, but it's an absolutely critical uh, critical part of of care and a critical component of avoiding safety. And I think the point actually I was going to make was that. Um, we, uh, I think I mentioned earlier in the presentation that, that it's generally thought that it's much, much more difficult to change behaviors than it is to change systems. So we work to change uh, systems, to create systems that prevent catastrophic uh, um, events uh, in, in the healthcare context uh, because we realize, as you've said, that, that uh, changing behaviors, human behaviors, is so difficult. I mean, we have to work at both, but it's really about systems. Um, and improving systems. Ken. Yeah. I, I would like to react about the role of accreditation system. 
because uh, I've been involved in uh, health care and also in education. And for both systems, we have accreditation process. You know, the Ministry of Education have, uh, you know, they, they, they have all the time that you have to have this number of, uh, criteria. Uh, of, criteria. of quality of, of uh, for example, teachers, standard ratio, criteria. standard, uh, criteria. Uh, standard or whatever, mm. all the time. And mm. they do accreditation mm. to university, to hospital, uh, to the university, and the education system and the healthcare system. And the difference, the difference between the two systems, one is the real accreditation, which means that you, you see whether the, 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 the institution pass or do not pass. You know, you accredit them. But uh, the way that HA Forum, you see, is not, is called accreditation, but it is not actually the accredita accreditation. It is an uh, acknowledgement of progress and learning together. And I think the accreditation system to work well have to be a system involving friends, helping friends. We help one another to improve quality and safety. You know, we are not seeing whether you meet the standard. It is important that uh, the people who do the accreditation system have that kind of mentality of helping to improve the system. You have to encourage no one is perfect, even the, the accreditation institution. They still have to learn. But we learn together through sharing of experience, through this and that, and uh, trying to avoid mistake. And I think this is a way also, if you instill the word uh, human dignity, respect for human dignity into this, and allow this to be discussed more as a key component of quality and safety, then we would be going a long way. Can, can I just say something about the, the, what the visual is doing? The, I think that the, for the, you know, the, from the past experience for the transformative health professional education, I think that they have given an emphasis on improving the relevance of the quality of the health professional education so that part of the, you know, of the, the uh, quality of the training of the health professional education, I think that they have uh, give an emphasis on how to improve the quality and the relevance of the education and training of all categories of health professional education to ensure that they recognize these, you know, compassionate, you know, the care that has been giving much more emphasis now that may not happen in the past, but now that what uh, the Bishop has been advocate for countries, uh, you know, to, to, to do more. That will be, you know, something that uh, will happen in the future. So that, that's something that, uh, you know, I, I would like to supplement what uh, Daniel uh, has uh, given earlier. Yeah? Okay. So you have address for both questions? And uh, any, any more uh, comments or the something to, the, to the discuss from the floor? Okay, so the probably time has, has come for lunch. So <laughs> because my clock is about uh, the 12, uh, almost 12 now. So I just would like to thank Dr. Daniel for his uh, very valuable uh, uh, information uh, that he has uh, given to the, you know, to the audience. And uh, I think that uh, you know the website that he has uh, give on the you know on the site 
you can search for more information about the patient safety initiative and all other tools that he has, uh, you know, the uh, give because uh, a lot of uh, covers of all those technical tools that uh, you can search for more information and a lot of information on those. So we would like to thank you, Daniel, for all those, uh, you know, the information you uh, present and I hope that the, the participant will uh, look for more information from that and information provided will be useful for your work to improve the quality of uh, health care that uh, you are uh, giving for your clients and uh, also for the work that you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you for uh, the Daniel's presentation. Thank you very thank much. You. Then. <laughs> and I think the meeting is adjourned and uh, probably the lunch is ready outside. Thank you very much. <laughs>